Module 3, Lesson 2. Objective is to make equivalent fractions with sums of fractions with like denominators. Here we have 1 fifth plus 1 fifth. Let's make a number line with our endpoints of 0 and 1. Between 0 and 1, what we'll do is we'll estimate 5 equal parts in between 0 and 1. So we made 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 equal parts by making 4 lines in between 0 and 1. Next, we'll go ahead and label it. We have 0 here. Next, we would have 1 fifth, 2 fifths, 3 fifths, and 4 fifths. On our number line, let's show how it is that we get 1 fifth plus 1 fifth. Here's where we start, and then that's our first fifth, and then that is our second fifth. So we have 1 fifth plus 1 fifth equaling 2 fifths. So that's 1 fifth plus 1 fifth equaling 2 fifths. So we've expressed this number line in this picture model with an addition sentence. And we will also look at this with a multiplication sentence as well. How many fifths were we looking at? We are looking at two. We are looking at two fifths. So we have two fifths. Two times one fifth does equal two fifths. Let's go ahead and work out another problem. Here we have one fourth plus three fourths, and let's use a number line to see what this looks like. At my number line, Go ahead and start with 0 and 1. And then we'll notice that these are like denominators, so we're going to divide our number line into force here. So in between 0 and 1, we're going to have 4 equal parts in between 0 and 1. So if I divide it in half first, I'd have 2 parts. And divide that again, I would have 4 equal parts. Labeling that, this first one is one fourth. This is two fourths. This is three fourths. We'll start at zero to model, and we have one fourth. So we add, we go to one fourth, but we're not done there yet because we're still adding three fourths. In adding three fourths, you'll notice we can't just go here because that would only be one fourth more. Can't go here either because that'd only be two fourths more, but we have to go one, two, and three fourths more. So this is one fourth plus that three fourths does equal four fourths, which does equal one whole. So one fourth plus three fourths does equal four fourths, which equals one whole. Showing our addition sentence one more time, again, that was 1 fourth plus 3 fourths equaling 4 fourths, which does equal 1. With our multiplication sentence, here we were looking at 1 fourth and then 3 more fourths. So 1 and 3 is 4. We are looking at 4 of those fourths. You see it was 1, 2, 3, and 4. So four of those fourths, or four times a fourth, which does equal four fourths, which also equals one. Four fourths does equal a whole. What do you notice difference within this problem? Do you notice that we're looking at eighths? The other thing that you may notice is that there's actually three addends.
Let's show this using a number line. You can see this here, that 5 and 5 already is going to be 10, which will actually be more than 8. So I know that my number line is going to have to be bigger than just in between 0 and 1. So I'll still draw my number line, but this time when I'm using 0 and 1, I'm going to put 0 here, and I'll put 1 here so that I'll have more room on my number line to work. I still have 8. And then so I'm going to divide this number line in between 0 and 1, in between each of those whole numbers, into 8 equal parts. So that's 2 parts, that's 4 parts, that's 5, 6, 7, and 8 parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 parts in between 0 and 1. Now what would the next whole number be after 0 and 1? you would get what? 2. And as just as before, in between 1 and 2, I will also divide that section into 8 equal parts. Remember, each of those parts is going to be worth 1 eighth. And then so I'll label some of these here. So 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, 6 eighths, 7 eighths, 8 eighths, or 1. This would be 9 eighths, or 1 and 1 eighth. This would be 10 eighths, or 1 and 2 eighths. And this would be 11 eighths. And then we would have 12 eighths, which is um, 1 and 4 eighths as well. Let's model this addition. So we'll start with 0, and it says 5 eighths first. So we're going to go all the way to 5 eighths, and I'll just write that in so that it looks a little clearer there, because that's what they asked us to do first. Oh, it looks like we're adding another 5 eighths, so we have to go 5 eighths more than where we are here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It looks like we would end up over at 10 eighths. That makes sense to me, because 5 plus 5 is 10. It doesn't quite look like 10. Make it look like a little bit more like 10. And then after that, it looks like we're only adding one more eighth. So we have to go from there. And this is the third step where um, we get to make one more arrow because we have another add end. So we go from 10 eighths to 11 eighths. So we have. Our addition sentence is 5 eighths plus 5 eighths plus 1 eighth does equal 11 eighths. How many units of 8 eighths do we see here within our addition problem? We actually see one unit, so there's one unit, in other words, one whole is equal to 8 eighths, but there's one unit of 8 eighths already. And then we have one, two, three more eighths. So really, this 11 eighths is really that one unit of eight eighths, which eight eighths put together with another three eighths. And remember, this eight eighths is equal to one. So we have one plus three eighths. Or as a mixed number, we write that as 1 and 3 eighths. Now looking at a multiplication sentence, we're looking at how many eighths are we looking at? Looks like we're looking at 5, 5 more, which is 10, and then 1 more, which is 11. So our multiplication sentence for this is 11 times 1 eighth, which equals 11 eighths, which does equal 1 and 3 eighths. Let's look at another problem here. We have 11 over 3, which is 11 thirds. Let's write that out with some words this time. We have 11 thirds. Let's draw a picture to see what it is that this looks like. 
So we have 0 here and 1. If we divide this into thirds, we have 1, 2. So that's 1 third. This is 2 thirds. And 3 thirds does equal 1. I'm not quite at 11 thirds yet, so I can't. It's not modeled yet. Our whole numbers is 0, 1, then 2. So we'll draw another line there for 2. And then so this was 0, 1 third, 2 thirds, 1, which was also equal to 3 thirds. That means this is 4 thirds, this is 5 thirds, and 2 would be 6 thirds. Are we there yet? Nope. To go further. This is 3, and between 2 and 3, we have 4 thirds, 5 thirds, 6 thirds, then 7 thirds, then 8 thirds. Notice that this would be 2 and 1 third, 2 and 2 thirds to 3. And then 3 is 9 thirds, but still we're not there. We have 11 thirds. We actually would need to extend this number line out even further to get to 4 and um, divide it into little parts there for the three parts, 9 thirds, 10 thirds, then 11 thirds. And then so that's where it is that we would be at for 11 thirds. Here's 0, all the way over there, for 11 thirds. Now if we look at this, for 11 thirds, and we look at it one more time and think about how many units of 3 thirds that we have, so we get 1, we get 1 here, for we have 3 thirds. So we can express 11 thirds as 3 thirds plus another 3 thirds to get to 2, right? plus another 3 thirds to get to 3, but we're not there yet. We need another 2 thirds to be able to get there. So we're expressing it as a addition sentence. Now you will also notice that 3 thirds, which has our number line, does equal 1. We know that 3 thirds does equal 1. So we have 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 thirds. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, and then we have 2 thirds. Now, so our fraction here, 11 thirds, does equal 3 plus that 2 thirds, which does equal a mixed number, 3 and 2 thirds. 11 thirds does equal Just like I had it here, 3 thirds plus 3 thirds, it's only 6 so far, plus another 3 thirds plus 2 thirds. And we know that 3 thirds does equal 1. 3 thirds does equal 1. 3 thirds does equal 1. And then we have that plus the 2 thirds there. Which means that this, just as up here, does equal 3. And I'll write it down here because I'm out of room. It does equal 3 and 2 thirds. Just like this is saying here, 11 thirds does equal 3 and 2 thirds.